feel good was i guess a, a very big turning point for lira as a whole when i wrote the song feel good it was at a point in my life where i'd gone through a lot of ups and downs um my first album had come out and you know there was just difficulty with distribution there i was now starting to write new music and i was thinking oh man and i'm so ready to come out with another album but i didn't want to release it with the same label i just got to a point where i got tired <laughs> Of, of feeling really stuck and depressed and, and just feeling really bad about my situation that when I wrote the song Feel Good it was like a, a request. The song Feel Good I think it was so appropriate for, for her because um, I think that was when it was a, a, a sign of good things to happen for Lira's career. When I was first constructing the song I, was, I came up with the words you know I just want to feel good every day I want to feel the joys of the day um, and then I wanted to find a, a melody that was simple enough to be catchy. I had a little tape deck with, with a built-in microphone and so I put the, the tape in a TDK and so we'd work with metronome, keys, bass and voice and it was just the three of us in the room. And the way I heard the track the first time was basically with a little cassette that Lira brought to me. It was so raw, I mean it was off a tape machine, it was them all in a room jamming together authenticity of, of her voice and her being that came through, through the song. It, it didn't need any other instrumentation for it to be convincing, you know. So. Let's just be romantic, not dramatic. Yeah, I told the label, you know, that she was signed to that, you know what, this year I'm not going to work with her, you know. I want to try work with fresh, you know, other people. And I was listening to one beat and the chorus idea, you know, came to mind and I, I took out my phone. I was driving by Mill Park, you know, to be specific, and, you know, I stopped and I sang on the phone. He, he recorded, can you be my Superman? Can you be my Superman? And I knew it wasn't for Busi, you know, and, and so in my mind I was trying to think, who can I give the song to? And I had no other choice, man, but to call it up again. He sent me a text message. <laughs> it's like, yo, let's work. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Maybe I, I did, maybe I, it was an SMS. I communicated with her as soon as the song was done, you know, when, when I had the, the song on my phone. Like, I cannot write a song when there's no beat. House music is not really romantic. House music is about, let's dance, oh to the dance floor oh you know when he needed us to record the song that's when he called and said okay i need us to do this song now you know you need to come through and we work on the verses let's just make this a very very different musical sexy romantic do all the little things the little things we worked on on the song on one session. Everything that we do has to be very musical because when we do music, we don't just do a song that's going to be a hit, especially this one. Very big rock. Anyway, back to Superman. <laughs> Even the spoken word that she does, it was never written down. I love romance. Somebody please marry me. I work on my music in a way that uh, it's music, you know, it's, I, I write songs, I, 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 I like, I like composition. I went through to Jabba's house, uh, Sticky was there because Sticky was recording Jabba in that session. Um, we chilled, we chilled, we chilled. And there was this beat playing, you know, Steve was working on some beat. Yeah, on the way back home, I, I, I just had this itch to make a song. I went to a C4 party and uh, there was these, this guy, you know, I think it's, it's a colored thing where when a guy's dancing in the middle of the circle, you know, like what that, you know, some guy will just come and say, hey, hey, make the circle bigger. Make the circle bigger. Make the circle bigger. When I got home, I wrote the song. I, I actually wrote like two verses to the song. And then, um, and the chorus as well, and the hook. And Jay was like, ish, you know, there's this beat, Joel. And like, this beat is just, it's just thumping, you know what I mean? 
I don't know what to do, you know, I don't have an idea, we don't have anything going, but Steve's been working on this beat for like four hours. We were stuck because we didn't know what to do with it lyrically. And I went to Steve and I said, I think I have a chorus for this. You know, Steve was like, okay, no, no, let's, let's hear the chorus. You know, I was like, okay. Seth told him the chorus, make the circle bigger, make the circle bigger. The song, he came up with this amazing idea. And I was like, okay, let's do this. Like he recorded the chorus, verses were put on. Sticky calls me, he says, yo, where are you? You know, we need to get inside the studio and finish off the song. I said, man, I thought the song was finished. He says, it's not finished. And we sat around thinking like, okay, we need something to take it home. You know, I was like, we love it. And Jeb was like, yeah, yeah. Jeb was like, yeah, we love it. Jeb's album was released first. Um, JR's album released later. Obviously, when they recorded, the agreement was, yo, uh, album will go to both albums uh, as featuring whoever. Yeah, the two dudes own the, tr the same track. And the circle was made big after that. The rest of the say is history, but that's how the song came along, you know? Mm -hmm.